Awesome. Uh, and then as, as I go through this morning, um, please feel free to ask any questions that you might have um, in the chat um, and I'll be sure to sort of keep an eye on those as I go through. Um, so this morning, um, I should just say uh, that I am going to be taking you through quite a few tools um, and just to show you that what is out there um, in terms of different geography um, and historical sort of um, tools that are available. Um, but in no way, obviously, am I trying to say you need to use all of them at once uh, because each of them has a different purpose. Um, but just to sort of share that there are quite a lot out there. Um, if you're joining, then um, it's really nice to see you all here. Um, please feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat as well. Um, and my contact details are there. So if you do have any questions or want to follow up with anything, please feel free to drop me an email after or reach out on Twitter as well. Um, so I'll just simply be going through um, each of these tools. Some of them will be more hands-on, so feel free to either um, go along with me or to sort of just watch along. Uh, it's completely up to you. So the first one I'm going to show you is the true size. Um, and what's really nice about this is it allows you to um, quickly go in and compare the size of a country to another country in the world. Um, so I will pop those links uh, into the chat for you all so that you've got them um, as well. But you can see here that I can quickly search, for example, the United Kingdom. And when I do that, I can then get that draggable country that I can then reposition around the world there. So again, I can sort of move around and highlight so I like comparing it to Australia, uh, which is where I'm from. Um, and you can just see the size comparison, um, and especially for younger learners that really struggle to sort of see um, the size of places and sort of be able to recognize uh, the difference. This is a really nice way to be able to do that there. Um, so it doesn't do a lot, um, but just in terms of that visual um, of being able to compare the size of any country that you're looking at, um, that you do have that ability to sort of pick them up um, and drop them around uh, as well. So, and then again, you can see that information as you hover over any of them. Uh, once you've searched for the size of it, then you can do so as well. So that's the true size. Again, as I just said, it is very simple, uh, but just a quick one to sort of take you through. Uh, the next one that I'm going to take you into uh, is GeoGuessr. Um, now, this is a great one uh, if you haven't used it before. It is essentially a game that allows you to see different places around the world. Um, and what it does is you can actually then go in uh, and experience them. So I'm going to show you now. So let me just open that one up. And again, I will pop this one into the chat for you so that you've got access to it. Um, you do need to sign up uh, to be able to get on and, and use it, um, but just simply use your Google sign-on um, as you sign up. It's not a complex process uh, once you've actually signed in. You just simply select your Google account and then you're off to go. Um, so this is what the website looks like. So you can see that there are different places around the world, famous places. Um, and then there are also um, based on specific areas as well. Um, and then there's sort of further around the world as well. Um, and what's really nice about this is that um, if you go in, I'm going to do um, Famous Australian uh, and then just tap on play. Oh, so you only do get the option to do one a day. Um, so that is just something to bear in mind. But for most teachers, you're usually only, only going to use something like this as a warm up or a starter activity uh, in a lesson anyway. Uh, and again, you've got that option to do single player or a challenge. And then you can um, put in a time limit if you want to. Um, so otherwise, you can just have no time limit. Um, I usually like to do this because it's much easier to be able to sort of have a think around. Um, and again, you'll be able to sort of zoom in so I can see this is the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Um, and obviously it shows you that street view image. Um, and then you need to be able to sort of guess uh, the location of where it is on the map there. 
Um, again, you do have that ability to make it full screen um, so that you've got that there. Um, and once you're sort of there and you know the name of the location, um, then you can simply go through um, and guess where it is. So, for example, on the map here, I can zoom in oh, to Melbourne and I can just tap on guess. And you'll see there that it comes up how close I was to the destination. Um, and again, it's going to go through to the next location. Uh, and ask me to guess where this is. Uh, so they are all using Street View images. Uh, some of them are much harder to sort of tell where they are. So for example, this is just on a road. Uh, so I might want to journey up the road and see if I can work out from that street sign map there uh, where I would be going. Uh, so it might not help, uh, but this is just to show you. It's the nice little warm-up activity. Um, and again, if you come back, uh, there's lots of different maps and things that you can explore. Um, and again, obviously, you are limited in time, uh, but it's a nice one to sort of use as a warm-up activity um, with your students there. Uh, so I'm going to go into our next one. Again, a lot of these ones that I'm introducing at the start are very much quick little warm-up activities or just sort of quick tools. They're not um, collaborative or sort of interactive in that sense. Um, so if you haven't seen this one before, um, I only recently discovered this. Um, and it looks at if the moon was only one pixel. And what it allows you to do is, I'm just going to take that full screen, um, is allows you to scroll through and you can see there, oh, if I come back. Uh, so it shows you the scale, um, so the moon being one pixel, uh, and then it shows you the exact scale. Now, if you go along, it starts obviously at the sun, and then you start to scroll along, and then it says that was about 10 million kilometres. That's how far we've travelled, and we keep scrolling along, pretty empty, and we keep going until we see Mercury. Um, and you'll notice that across the top here, there are all the planets that I can easily go on to. And again, that will scroll all the way through uh, until you get to, for example, Neptune. And if you use this little icon in the bottom right corner of the screen, this shows you how fast the light is traveling. Um, so it's a nice way to be able to um, teach um, pupils how that actually works um, and what um, scale refers to. So how far actually places are apart often when we do anything uh, in terms of the solar system that uh, it's very sort of misconstrued in terms of uh, that scale and size and how close things are. Um, so another just great little tool there um, that you've got access to to be able to use. Uh, again, I will pop this one in the chat for you. Uh, so the next one that I'm going to take you into is Google Lit Trips. Um, now, if any of you have done uh, the Google Level 2, then you'll probably know about Google Lit Trips already. Um, oh, I haven't linked this one. So I'll take you in and show you how you get onto Google Lit Trips. So if you just simply search Google Lit Trips, uh, and it's the first one that comes up. Uh, so Google Lit Trips... Um, started um, through a um, group of uh, literacy educators that wanted to uh, map the journey of characters <clears throat> in books um, to their destinations uh, in the world. Um, and you'll notice here that this is just a little preview of what it looks like. Um, and on the side here in Lit Trip Library, this is where all of the different ones are. So you can look by their location or you can simply go into uh, the grade five to eight titles in here. <clears throat> and you can go through and search based on uh, the book that you're looking for. Uh, so one of my favorites um, is Are We There Yet? Um, and this is an Australian author um, that journeys around Australia. Um, and I think one of the nice things is that we often uh, teach our pupils or read a story um, and it's very hard as for our younger learners to sort of understand where those places are on the map. Um, and to access any of these, 
all you need to do is simply use request a lit trip here. Um, and as you go down, it'll just ask you to put in your email address uh, and then choose which one you'd like to do. So for example, around the world in 80 days. Uh, and then if you want to just suggest a new title, you can do that. Uh, but all you need to do is request a lit trip there. Uh, it'll say thank you. And then in a moment, I'll receive an email um, with that lit trip that I can then access. <clears throat> Um, so this is a nice way to be able to use these. Um, I'm just simply going to show you how you access them. Um, and then obviously what I should be receiving now is a email, fingers crossed. Might not have come through just yet. I might need to give it a little bit of time. Um, but that Google Lit Trip will then get sent uh, to my email address and I can then open it up. Um, so it hasn't come through yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one, uh, that I downloaded just before, just to be able to sort of take you in to see that now. So all of these Google Lit Trips are placed in Google Earth. Um, so if you haven't seen the new Google Earth, there's quite a lot uh, that's been added into it. Um, and it does sort of allow you to explore a little bit more, um, as well as if you know about uh, Google Tour Builder, which was the old style version of this. Um, this basically allows you to sort of map out the locations um, and show the journey history. What's really nice as well is that you can easily add in any pictures or videos, information, text. Uh, so if you're doing a story that you can put all of this information in one location uh, that you can then share with your learners. Um, and you can also have your learners collaborating on this at the same time. Um, so that's definitely a big benefit um, of using it. It's worth noting that it does take a little bit of time uh, to load up. And obviously, uh, because I'm in a meet with you all, it is going to be a little bit longer. Um, and then all you need to do is on the left hand side um, in here, you'll see projects. Um, and so earlier, just before this, I downloaded the A Walk in London book. Um, and this actually goes through and you can see here that if I zoom in on that map there, that this is actually going to take me into lots of different um, iconic spots around. Um, and to present this book, all I need to do is tap on present. And you'll see here that uh, it starts off with London um, and that in the table of contents. And then again, all I need to do is tap on next. And it's going to zoom in on that um, and sort of talk about the book here a little bit. So you'll notice that on the right hand side of my screen here that there is uh, the book information as well as a picture of the book. Um, and I can then go through to the next part. And this is then going to do a zoom in on that area. Uh, and start where the book starts in the story. Um, now, obviously, one of the huge benefits of this is that it's already pre-created uh, material that you can use. Uh, towards the end of today's session, I'll take you into actually how you can go about creating your own versions of these. Uh, but you can see here that there is a video that can be watched, and then there is discussion starters. So there's questions to respond to, and then there's also more information here that you can access as well. Um, and this currently shows a sort of graphical image of London, um, but I can equally take the street view image uh, and zoom in to see it from a street view angle as well. Um, and again, I can quickly use this little icon here, which will allow me to uh, go and explore any of the other content areas as well. So again, you can see here, adding in a video, I've got that image of Buckingham Palace there. And again, I do have those questions there as well. So I'll come back to um, Google Earth um, later on, but this is just to show you how those Google Lit Trips are applied uh, 
it's through there. Yeah, it's it's is a fantastic resource uh, to have access to, and and obviously just that fact that um, some of these books are going to be books that you've probably shared with your um, pupils already. So um, it's just a nice way to be able to um, take and reuse uh, content that other people have made, not always having to reinvent the wheel as well. Um, so the next one that I'm going to take you into is my maps. Um, again, this is one um, that if you've been using, uh, if you've done your Google level two, uh, then you'll have seen my maps already. Uh, so again, I'm just simply going to open this one up. And I'm just going to close these ones down. So in Google My Maps, what this allows you to do is to add pins onto a t uh, 2D map of the world um, just to sort of show you um, how this can obviously be sort of extended is that obviously we just saw those Google Lit Trips that are a more dynamic image, uh, but maybe for example, um, you want to show uh, the different sites that Harry Potter saw uh, during uh, the movie. And this actually goes to the specific sites uh, around the UK. And you can see that um, there's obviously the different icons. I can click onto them and this shows you the information uh, that's been mapped out. So if I want to see Hogwarts, uh, I can quickly tap onto this. And this does have that information there. Again, I can go up and see uh, the Hogwarts Express. Um, so you can see just how easy it is to sort of add in any content. Again, you can customize these icons here. So just another way to be able to quickly show uh, locations around, around the world as well. Um, if I come back again, just to sort of show you another one um, is that um, Paddington Bear. We'll see if this one comes up. Um, so again, this goes through um, Paddington Bear's journey around London. Uh, and again, I can quickly tap onto any of these um, and see that information here. Um, now, all of these sort of just are based on text information, um, but what's worth noting is that, again, uh, just like Google Lit Trips, you can go in and add in your own content. Uh, so, for example, I've got one set up, places I'd like to visit. Uh, being in lockdown uh, and someone who loves traveling, um, I'm a big one that uh, wants to travel again. Uh, so this is a collaborative map uh, and I'm going to give you access to collaborate on this. So feel free to um, access it. So I'll, again, I'll pop this one in the chat for you all. Um, and you'll be able to go on and in that shared with me, this is where you'll be able to access it. Um, and what I'd love you to do is to simply search for a place that you'd love to visit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead uh, and search for Japan. It's definitely somewhere that's always been on my um, bucket list of places to go to. And again, I just simply tap on add to map. This will then come up in my list over here. I can customize it using the edit pencil up here. Um, so I can go and search for some information. So if I want to, I can just do a quick Google search. Um, so let's do Japan guide. Um, so I might look for um, top destinations to go and see itinerary ideas. And then I can then use this information um, to sort of decide where I'd like to go to um and and guide from there so if i want to do any research um then i can do that just by um going and selecting some information um, and again this takes you through sort of some different highlights to see um, and i can then use that uh in this um, description here or you could simply just say um, i'd love to visit the streets of tokyo and explore the blossoms blossom flowers um, and then again if I want to I can add an image or video just by using that camera icon down the bottom and then I can um, use the more option and do a Google image search um, and then again I can quickly select an image and tap to insert that on um, again I do have that ability to add more photos in as well so again I can pull that back up um, and I might simply uh, 
Uh, yeah, just give me one second. That's really strange. I'll just check why. I'll just try that again. You should all have access to it. Um, if you haven't been able to, if you simply go to My Maps, uh, so I'm just going to show you. So if you go to um, My Maps and then go to Shared across the top here, um, that map that I've just shared with you should appear there as well. So if you can't get onto it using that link, uh, if you go to Google My Maps and go to Shared, that link should be there for you to access. Um, obviously, don't worry uh, if you don't, because um, you'll still be able to see what I'm what I'm demoing at the front here. Um, and then again, obviously, if I wanted to, I can go in and add an image as well. Um, and I can also change the color of that pin on the map. Um, I can also change to use an icon. So if there's a particular icon that I'd like to use, I can do that. I can even upload my own custom icon. Uh, so if I do the custom icon option, um, I could do a Google image search uh, and I might like to look for uh, There we go. And I can use that as my little icon there. So I've got that, as you can see here. Um, and then again, if I just refresh that page, hopefully I'll start to see some of you that have had access, fantastic. So I can now start to see those points uh, that those of you that do have access in there uh, to be able to go on uh, and view. Um, so that's just really nice to be able to quickly go through uh, and tap on to uh, different locations around the world that people have put in um, as well. And then obviously just remember that you can always go in and add in any information as well. Um, and then you can simply use that preview option, which then opens that map up into full view here. Um, and again, it does give you that extra view um, of how it looks on the map there. Um, so it's just a nice way to be able to change. And again, you can customize it from uh, that sort of graphical image and being able to zoom in as well. Uh, so the next one that I'm gonna take you into, if I can remember, is Google Arts and Culture. Um, so with Google Arts and Culture, if you haven't explored this, um, this is um, a fantastic resource that allows you to, oh, I don't have the right one linked. Um, so again, I'll just show you how you get on. So Google Arts and Culture, and it is that first one that comes up. Again, I will pop that link in the chat so you can feel free to follow along. Um, and what this is, is it's, um, it allows you to explore lots of museums, art galleries, uh, and different areas around the world. It's not just pertained to arts. Um, so it's why I always do recommend going onto it. Um, there is also a um, Android or iOS app of this that allows you to do a couple more things. Um, for example, you can take a selfie uh, and then compare your image to a famous artist's uh, work uh, and you can see that face match. So that's sort of, sort of a nice one to do. It's not one that you can do with your pupils um, because they can't access it, but just sort of a nice fun one to do for yourselves. Uh, and again, you can go through, so you can step inside any of the museums around the country. Um, so for example, if you wanted to go and explore the Van Gogh Museum um, or any of the different museums around, you can quickly go in uh, and take a step through. Um, so this is a nice way, again, different landmarks as well are also here to view um, and explore what's really nice. Um, is that there are 360 degree videos as well that you can access uh, that take you through different locations as well. Um, and it's also worth noting that in the Explore, if you are um, sort of into your art as well, um, that any of these um, artworks that you go into, so the Renaissance art, 
uh, is possibly my favorite, um, <clears throat> is that you can easily share these. So um, if you've got a classroom set up, you can quickly share those out. Um, but for any particular artwork as well that you might be looking at, um, so for example, this one here, um, you do have that option to view it in Street View as well. Um, and then you can use um, that plus to add it uh, to your favorites. And again, you can zoom in uh, on these particular artworks, but you've always got more information down here as well. Uh, and then in the favorites, any work that you've gone through and added, you can quickly see those here. And for any particular artwork, you can actually create a, your own art gallery. Um, so this is a nice way for adding in uh, any particular objects. So if you add them to your favorites, uh, then you can then go ahead and create uh, your own art gallery, uh, giving it a title and a description. And then again, you can share this um, with your um, learners as well. Um, so this is a nice one just to take some time to explore. Um, so that you can come back to and explore the various different art. Uh, there's also inside uh, theatres as well, and you can simply use that option here. Nikki, can you just mute yourself, please? Thank you. Um, so you can go into performing arts. No worries. Uh, you can go into performing arts and then look on uh, different stages around the world as well. Um, so this is a fantastic way to be able to do that as well. Um, so that's definitely worthwhile uh, looking into if you haven't already. Uh, the next one that I'm going to take you into is Google Earth Engine. Um, and I am going to hit present on this one so that you can see it. Uh, so what you'll see here um, is using Google Earth Engine, it does a time lapse video um, of how the Earth has changed over time. Uh, and this is a really nice way to be able to quickly access um, how the world has changed. Um, so again, I will pop this one into the chat. Uh, and you'll see here that you can select um, any particular area. Um, so one of the sort of really interesting ones to watch uh, is the glacial retreat and to see how that's changed over time. And again, you will see that you have the ability to change that playback speed as well. So you can slow it down um, and you can also obviously speed it up. So if you want to see that really quickly, you can do so as well. Uh, and again, if there's a particular one that you want to stop on, you just simply use that pause here on the side. So you can jump to, for example, in 1993, what did it look like here? Uh, and again, on that left-hand side, uh, you can see the urban growth, uh, for example, in the Bay Area in California. Now, this doesn't have everywhere. Um, it just has certain areas um, around the world, um, depending on whether they have the image to show it. And again, you'll start to see that build up uh, across time as you go through. Um, it's really interesting seeing um, somewhere like Las Vegas um, that has obviously went from sort of being um, very dry and uh, desert to um, sort of a built up area that uh, we know now. <clears throat> And obviously just that expansion um, of from a sort of smaller area uh, to that larger area as well. Um, and obviously as well, um, being able to see the deforestation effects uh, that have happened over time as well. Um, so these are great talking points. And again, um, you do have that ability to sort of go through um, and for any of these, you can quickly share the link to them just by using that share option here. Uh, and that will share that current view. Um, you can also embed this onto, uh, for example, a Google site. So I could just simply copy that embed link 
Uh, and if you didn't know how to do that, I'll just quickly take you there now to show you. So on a quick Google site here, Uh, so on my Google site here, I could go and put GeoTools and then to actually use that embed code, you'll see that if I double tap on the white space in sites, I've then got embed and I don't want to embed by URL. I want to use embed code. I can then simply paste that code in there, tap on next, and then this will then come up with that view. And again, I can simply tap on insert. Um, so now if I just resize that to make it um, fill my screen, you'll see that that uh, will now go through um, as that same view that we saw before. And again, I will just want to make it bigger so that they can actually use that toolbar at the bottom. Um, but again, because that has been embedded on, uh, it is fully interactive then uh, in that content. Um, so that's one of the really nice things here is that a lot of the geo tools that you'll use today uh, can be embedded onto a Google site directly. So if I then go and view that site, uh, you'll see that now um, that view is here. And again, I can pinch and zoom in on it. And again, all I have to do is simply tap on play. And again, because this is directly uh, embedded in the site, it just makes it easier for pupils to be able to access um, that content rather than sort of just directing them to the site. You can actually build your own class site uh, to sort of house some of those materials. Equally, you could share it uh, into Google Classroom as well. Um, so the next one I'm gonna take you into uh, is Google Earth Voyager. So whilst I showed you Google Earth before, um, what I didn't show you is, oh, let's just bring that one back, um, is what Google Earth Voyager looks like. Oh. Um, so again, um, with Google Earth Voyager, this has a bunch of um, ready-made tools available, um, as well as a section that are available on games as well. Um, and it's worth noting that you can always access Google Earth um, through your apps launcher um, in the top right corner of your screen here, and just simply tap on Google Earth here. Um, remember, it does take a little bit of time to load, so just bear with me whilst that comes through. Um, again, if there are any questions or, quest uh, or ideas that you want to know, please feel free to pop those in the chat uh, so that I can come back to them as well. Okay, fantastic. Now we're up and going. Uh, so once it's up, you'll see that that content is here uh, to be able to use in Google Earth Voyager. Um, and that content is simply accessed by pressing on the little captain's wheel on the side here. Um, and my one of my actual favorite animals is the seahorse. And I've just seen uh, that that has come up um, as an option there. Oh, let's come back. Um, so I can quickly tap between these um, to view them and I can go in and explore. Oh, sorry. There we go. Can you see it now? Can you see my screen? Okay. It says on mine that you can see it. That's all. Sorry. Let me just present that then.
Can you see my screen now? Perfect, thank you. Um, so you'll see here that when I go into Google Earth Voyager that I can then start exploring. Um, and again, this is going to take me through to view that content um, in a similar way that that lit Google Lit Trip that we explored earlier. Um, so this is showing me Bondi Beach at the moment. Um, and again, I can simply go through that content. Um, I can use um, that person icon uh, to be able to explore and interact with that as I go through. Uh, so again, I can simply move around. I've got all of this information on the side here. Uh, and you'll see again uh, that that view has changed uh, and we're now into um, exploring sort of underwater um, through Bondi Beach. Um, and again, I can easily come back out um, and then just into that captain's wheel. Yep. Can you all see my screen? Perfect. Thank you. I think it's one of these things that Google Earth, uh, if you didn't know, uh, Google Earth is a big sucker um, of bandwidth on the internet and obviously trying to record uh, this meet uh, and have you all there is uh, really hard to be able to do. Uh, so that's just something uh, to keep in mind. Um, but you're not usually going to have this problem. Um, so on the um, side here, you will see that there are various educational content um, that goes through the shapes um, looks at castles, um, goes into explore animals, James Cook um, voyage, even into poetry around the world, um, and then looking at ABCs from space, so different um, sort of geographical images. Um, so these are great ready-made tours. Uh, this builds on that lit trip that we saw earlier, um, and it uses more sort of newer content, even maths and architecture. Um, so these are all ready made for you to explore. So if you haven't already, I definitely recommend going through uh, and exploring this. There are also games available um, and these are fantastic to play um, with your learners as well. Uh, so they can do quizzes of lakes around the world, um, food origins, um, holiday traditions, uh, transportation, etc. Um, so they're fantastic to be able to access as well. Um, the next thing that I'll do, obviously just leading in from this, um, is how you can go in and create your own. Um, so all you need to do is simply search for a location. Uh, so I'm going to go into Great Ocean Road. Um, and then again, what I can do once that's then mapped and found that location on there, um, I can simply go ahead um, and add to projects. So this starts uh, in the CBD of Melbourne and I simply just use add to projects. Um, this will then take me on to my places to visit because I've already set one up. If you don't, you just simply use the new project option and then you can simply tap on save. 
And what this will start to do is it'll pull out a little pop-up screen on the side here um, that allows you to map different locations um, around the world. Um, and then all you need to do to add a new place on the map is simply use new um, feature and then search to add a place. Uh, so for example, I might go into the 12 apostles uh, and then I can simply tap on there. And again, that's going to then zoom in on the specific location. Uh, like so. Now this shows it from the sky view, which is not very good um, because you don't get the full perspective. So what I am going to do though is I'm going to take that person down onto street view. And again, you'll see here that this shows um, what's left of the 12 apostles here. Um, and then if I want to take this view, all I need to do is use this little um, image icon with the put pinpoint. And again, I can simply give it a title and then simply just tap on save. And that place has now been added on to my tool that I've created. Um, and again, if I want to, I can go in and edit this um, scene. And what it will come up with is it gives me the option here to add in an image um, and then add in some information. And again, here I can use any links to websites or information. I can, all, um, I can also change whether that box is large or small. Um, and I can also set the pinpoint um, of how I want that to look on the map. Um, and so on here, for example, I'm simply going to add in a image, just doing a Google image search. Um, so I can go through and find an image. This shows what it used to look like when we had uh, more. Uh, so I might like to do that. Again, I do have that ability to add multiple images. Um, I can also search for a YouTube video here. So I can quickly go in. Uh, so I've got before and after collapse. Um, so there's a video now attached to this tour. Uh, and again, all I need to do is simply preview this presentation. And you'll see there that that comes up. I can go through, I can play that video directly, which will then open it up into that full screen view for me. And again, that's just going to take you through uh, that video that I've put on. Um, but if I just go through to that next part of the content, it is going to then fly around the world and zoom in to that first location um, of my scene. And again, if I want to, I can then interact with this uh, using the settings down here. Um, and then I can actually fly to that next part. Uh, so it sort of shows me that different view of that location as well. Um, so Google Earth um, is a fantastic way uh, to be able to see different locations and also to um, allow your children uh, to go ahead and create their own uh, Google Earth journeys around the world. Um, so as they actually sort of explore a country, maybe you might like to set them a task of being able to do that as well. Um, so I'm going to jump in to uh, the last two tools that I'm going to show you. So I've obviously gone into those creation tools that I just mentioned. Um, so our next one is Google Expeditions. Um, and this is a Android app. So I'm just going to share my entire screen.
Perfect. So I'm going to take you into Google Expeditions and Google Expeditions uses virtual reality and augmented reality. So the first time you log in, you will need to sign in. And then you need to select your account that you're using. Um, and then you can just simply go on. Now, once this comes up, Uh, and then it gives you that option to explore. So the discover is where you'll find all of the tools available. Um, and these are both virtual reality and augmented reality tools. Um, now it's worth noting that um, on your Chromebooks, if that's what you're using, um, your pupils won't be able to explore any of the AR content. Now, if you don't know what AR stands for, it's augmented reality. And what that allows you to do is to see objects within your own surroundings. So for example, um, if you are um, out in the park, then you could actually bring uh, the dinosaur into the park that you're standing in. Um, but you can only do that from an AR compatible device. Uh, usually a smartphone will do this. Um, but you can still explore it. So for example, the uh, skeletal system here, if I tap onto any of these, um, I'll get to download to view it. And then I simply use view in AR. This then allows you to sort of move around the human body. I can um, pinch to zoom in and I can explore up nice and close uh, as you can see here. Um, and what's really nice is that on the right hand side, there is information that you can use. Um, you can even go up nice and close into the skull and you can see how it separates and comes back together uh, to show you that view as well. Um, so what's really nice about um, Google Expeditions is that you can take um, your learners anywhere around the world. Uh, so for example, into the world of ancient Rome, uh, and again, this will allow you to view it. Now, obviously, we can't see it in AR, but we still get to explore uh, what the Colosseum looks like. And again, being able to pinch uh, and move all the way around. Um, and all of these have that historical information, facts or questions uh, down here as well. So again, this just shows um, a dagger. Um, so I'm going to take you into a virtual reality tool. So I can use that option on the side here. Uh, so you can use it um, on Chromebooks because um, we've got the Android um, apps available on Chromebooks. So it doesn't need, so you can use it on iPads um, or on Android devices. Um, it works on both. Um, it's not limited, uh, but our Chromebooks are available to use uh, the Expeditions app as well. Um, so that's one of the really nice things about it. So I can simply look for um, the seven wonders of the world. Oh. So I can go in and search for something that I'm looking for. Um, so anything that I'm looking to explore, um, actually, I might go into the Grand Canyon for this one because uh, this is a nice one to sort of show you. Um, so simply download to view this tool. And then if I'm thinking about this in the classroom, then I can actually take these uh, and use the guide option. And what this allows me to do is to then control what content uh, my pupils see on their device. And you'll see that this shows me a 360 degree um, image of the Grand Canyon uh, and you can obviously pinch to zoom in uh, on any particular part. Um, and if you want to direct in to see the whitewater rapids of the Colorado River, you can do that as well. Um, as well as seeing um, different images, um, you can obviously go through and access this content here as well. Uh, there's also the um, Grand Canyon Skywalk um, that sort of shows you that path um, along through here, um, which is how you're actually able to walk through the canyon. Um, so this is a nice way just to be able to take your, um, your pupils anywhere around the world um, and explore. Now, um, 
This is fantastic um, because these are already ready-made content. But what you can also do is using Google Tool Creator, you can actually go and create your own. Uh, now, I am conscious of time, uh, but I am going to very quickly show you um, how easy it is to go and create your own tool. So you simply go on to Tool Creator and then simply tap on Get Started. Uh, and then all you need to do is select either a new tool or you can go into templates. Templates allows you to use any of the content that's already there. So for example, I've got one here. Um, I'm gonna go into this Melbourne tool that I started the other day. Um, so you'll have to put in a cover photo. Um, again here, it's just a matter of finding an image that you're going to use as that there. And then you'll see here that I can quickly add in different locations um, around Melbourne because that was my focus for this tour. Uh, so this is Luna Park. Um, and then all I need to do to add in these scenes is simply tap on Add Scene. It'll bring up Street View here. Uh, and then I can go and explore. So I'm going to take you to um, Sky High Mount Dandenong. Uh, which is close to where I uh, used to live. Um, and this shows you a panoramic view um, looking out over Victoria. Um, so in the far distance um, is the city. And again, if I'm not happy with that image, I can drag um, around the map here um, and find a different view um, until I'm sort of happy with the view that I get. So for again, I can sort of explore out. Uh, I like this one because it does have the rays there. And then again, I just simply tap on add scene. Now, it's worth noting that obviously those images do come from Street View, so people can add those in there. Um, but it is obviously fantastic uh, to be able to go and create your own chores. Um, and again, I can simply give it a name here. Um, and then I can go in and add my own descriptions in here. So um, I can say sky high is the only point in Victoria that allows you to see the furthest most point and the CBD at the same time on a clear day. Um, and again, I do have the ability to add points of interest. So for example, uh, on the Melbourne Cricket Ground one here, I have added a point of interest. Um, so I can then add image overlays uh, like this and I can also add audio uh, or I can do a scene narration as well. Um, so I am conscious of time, um, but uh, this is just one to sort of highlight and share as well. Um, but it's also worth noting that if you want to sort of do a sort of a longer in-depth view of Tool Creator, that there is a video uh, in this uh, team resources folder uh, to be able to access this. Uh, so at that point, I'm going to come back to the Google Meet uh, and see if there are any questions. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself or to pop any questions in the chat. You're welcome. Uh, Shanpreet, I will uh, give you a copy of that now. Just bear with me one second. I'll just pop that link in the chat so that you've all got it. Um, and again, the recording for those at uh, Leo Academy will be in our uh, team uh, training resources folder where all of our recordings are saved. Uh, any externals, thank you for joining. Um, feel free to email me if you'd like access as well. You're very welcome. Have a great day, everyone.